Hi Aries, welcome to your quantum astrological read for the month of June. I am so sorry, I know I'm a little bit late getting these out. Dude, the lunar eclipse just freaking floored me. So I need a little bit of time for recovery from that. So we're going to dive in. This is for Aries sun moon rising and... Um, we're just going to keep these two general messages. We're going to do an overview, you guys. If you've seen these before, you know how it goes, but I'll go through everything going on planetary movement-wise, how it could be affecting you, and a general overall message, okay? If you guys are wanting to book a one-on-one, -on -one, my website information is down below in the description box. Just go ahead and subscribe your email there, and that way you'll always get an email notification every time my availability does open up. And as always, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing. Thank you for all the ways that you have supported the channel. And we shall dive in. Okay. Oh, well, I love this. Okay. So depending, I am going to take these three. Depending on what's going on for you guys in your situation. These are perfect cards. So first one is the empty well. Time to replenish. And maybe that's already something that you guys have been trying to do. Is just try to replenish yourself. And um, we also have eyes of the eagle. Rising the, above the fray. You might be starting to... Like certain things. You could be getting an overall view. And over your life in general there could be something about an elevated way that you're seeing certain things aries throughout the month of june and so it might cause like there's so many things going on planetary wise which i'll get into but i feel as though some type of information because the eagle is a very high powered dominant energy right it's it flies it overhangs over a situation it can see everything from up above and something about your perception or maybe even about your higher knowing is going to help you to see clearly above maybe your even a moan emotional states or the emotions of people around you there's just something about an elevated view or a, like a bird's eye view into certain type of situations for you to kind of see what's going on and how to navigate things and then you also have closing the door, a completion that's going to be coming in, okay? So I feel like, depending on how this timeline has been going for you guys, you could be trying to kind of work on closing some type of door, either to a relationship, or it could be just in general, like you're trying to kind of close the door on some type of situation and finish out some type of process, because I feel a little bit as though something's kind of been in limbo for you guys for a while. Like something has maybe been drawing out. Like the completion hasn't completely finished for some reason. Hold on. That was a really crazy intense one. I am going to take this first one that jumped out though. So in your house, Aries, the way you might be seeing yourself this month is nine of pentacles this is accomplishment fortitude great abundance this is also a card of like being independent doing things on your own being very self-sufficient and feeling very confident in that feeling very self-assured feeling like you can comp complete things on your own throughout this month yeah because you're going to be feeling really like powerful especially with the eagle totem coming in that might make you feel really like You've got an eye, you've got, there's something I feel for you guys that could be happening where you knew something in the past, you knew some type of answer or you knew something and maybe someone had came, come in and tried to make you doubt that or question what you knew. And if you had gotten sidetracked from that previously, there's like, you have this overall perception just knowing the answer or knowing how to accomplish something. My, maybe in the past, like you'd kind of lost track of that or maybe lost faith. You're coming back into your power this next month. And then maybe it also could be coming in with communication because the bird is air energy. And we also have a lot of stuff going on in your third house. We have the sun and we have mercury, all that's going to be in your third house. Plus the solar eclipse that's in Gemini, the, the moon is going to be in your third house. Okay. So 
just chill with me for a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, for some of you guys, I'm going to put both of those in your second house. We have the five of swords and the nine of swords. I feel like, um, you might have had some financial worries or some stress going on there, but it feels as though, and for some of you guys, this could also be related to your job or business, especially with the nine of pentacles coming out first. It feels as though, yeah, there's something about like seeing into a situation and not letting your your mental mind overtake you in a certain situation like not letting your thoughts run wild and trying to kind of get this rise above the whole situation and try to get an overall view okay okay just gonna give one more shuffle and then we are gonna run through these okay and that feels good. Yep. Yeah. Look at the completion right there. So you have the world card in your third house. Yes. You might Aries be communicating some type of an ending. All right. I'm saying that because you have over here, right? Closing a door. There's a completion happening. You might be, and it, I feel as though, depending on where you guys are at in your situation, I feel as though something that you've been doing to your, replenish yourself, you're, you've been kind of preparing to close a door and have some type of finality. But you, I feel like it's been waiting or there's been a hold on some completion. It hasn't quite happened yet. The month of June, it might actually happen. There's a completion that you're either preparing for or it might actually come to a completion in June. And so, uh, let me keep pulling. We're, I'm going to pull out all the cards. We have four of swords in the fourth house. Hilarious. Of course, that always happens. We have the two of pentacles in the fifth house. Four of cups in your sixth house. Yeah, will of fortune in the seventh. I love that. Okay, cool. We have the higher font in the eighth house. Judgment in your ninth. Queen of Cups in the tenth. There's the moon. Yeah, that's perfect. There's Cancer energy. Maiden of Wands in your eleventh. And Queen of Swords in the twelfth. Okay. All right. So, what I can see happening. Mercury is going to be... Um, Mercury is retrograde in the third house, right? We're in Mercury retrograde right now. We also have in your fourth house, um, fascinatingly, Mars and Venus are going to be in your fourth house. So for those of you, this is a very strong emphasis on there could be, especially with the Four of Swords coming in your fourth house, there could be something happening about partnerships even with home. And now with Mars and Venus, it's kind of telling me that this is either about a love relationship, but there also could be some type of resolution. Venus is a hilarious planet because she brings love into certain situations. And I feel like that's the only planet that could really counteract Mars because Mars is so fiery and powerful and it's like the warrior it's a very masculine like action taking energy so i feel like when it comes to a particular relationship throughout the month of um june you might be kind of like uh very persuasive it's very libran kind of energy or tarian it's kind of like i feel as though there could be a certain relationship that you be you're going to be dealing with and there could be some type of like you're taking rest and solitude to yourself i feel as though someone might be in conflict a little bit with that or someone might be kind of getting fired up I, I almost want to even say like the heat is on in some type of relationship or situation, but I feel as though it's a love relationship. It doesn't seem like anything conflicting or anything, but there's a pretty strong emphasis. Here are the court cards coming in. We also have, there's the Taurus energy right there. I think that there's going to be possibly a completion that you start communicating. 
whether that's already taken place, like it could be to your home or a living situation or actually to a relationship, okay? Now, with Mercury being retrograde, it's like about miscommunications or misunderstandings, right? So be a little bit cautious with that. But I feel as though you guys are going to complete some type of thing this month. It's emphasized everywhere. There's a completion happening. There's the world card, the end of a cycle. Now, here's the really interesting thing. I feel as though there might be a different turn that you kind of take in certain relationships. Because you have the Wheel of Fortune in your seventh house, which is partnerships and relationships. And that's the one I wanted to focus on just a little bit. I feel as though there could... Uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Sorry, I know I'm all over the place. You have the Four of Cups in your house, in your sixth house, which is the house of health. And I feel as though if you felt kind of bored or like kind of apathetic or a little bit um, kind of not very motivated to do certain things, I feel as though that might come to a completion, but it will probably be from you kind of putting some boundaries up to some type of self-sabotaging habits because the Queen of Swords is in your 12th, directly across from it. And that's Piscean. So it's all about the house of self-undoing. And whenever the Queen of Swords comes in there, it's kind of telling me that there are certain things that you will want to say no to, or and it's about communication. And it could be saying no to other people around you or saying no to yourself. It's just putting up strong boundaries because I feel as though something could be affecting you health wise to make you feel kind of like either low on energy or depressed or maybe even at times just apathetic. You don't really feel like you have a purpose sometimes to move forward. That will change just from you. Maybe it could be also learning something, learning something into your health because some of you guys, there could even be something that you're ingesting that's like causing a little bit of this apathetic energy to be activated inside of your body so it's that's why if you guys look up there's a guy named andrew huberman he's this neuroscientist i really enjoy listening to and he talks all about he's been confirming everything that i've been freaking saying over the past couple of years about how the food that you're eating is going to cause emotional imbalances it's everything connected to your gut so take a look at that and so here's the one thing that I wanted to talk and touch on just a little bit. Mars is going to be moving into your fifth house. And this house, especially of the two of pentacles there. So if you've been kind of fluctuating back and forth or you've been feeling like you have to juggle quite a few things and maybe you feel as though you don't really have time to fit in a hobby or a sport, that's where Mars is going to be hitting. It's your hobbies, your sports. It could be romances. So I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have like a little bit of tension going on in some type of romantic relationships or things like that. But you're going to have a lot of action and kind of like fire and drive coming into your fifth house to when it comes to some type of creative hobby or, you know, something that you want to take action on. So it might require that you have to kind of move some things around in your schedule or, or kind of like juggle quite a few things in your day to day um, kind of responsibilities with the higher font too. That's all about like your structure, your routines, your day to day kind of rituals and habits. I can see that you'll be balancing a lot there, but you'll have a lot of energy to do it like you'll have a lot of motivation coming in there with mars so i actually like that it might actually motivate your health once your health turns around i feel as though there's a change happening in a particular partnership or relationship okay you might also have some type of a rebirth of ideas like something that you had given up on in the past um, you might revive it. You might have kind of like an awakening when it comes to philosophies or certain things that you've done in the past. Something might come back around and you try something out again. Or you thought it didn't work in the past. Something about your environment or things has changed now. And it's allowing you to kind of rebirth an old idea that you had tried to do in the past. But it might actually work this time because you have a different set of circumstances that are around you that might help you to actually accomplish something this month okay that's cool so over here you have okay so the retrogrades this month freaking there's gonna be three four I believe there's maybe even five yeah five planets Jupiter Saturn um, Mercury obviously 
And what was the other one? Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury. I fudging freaking can't remember. <laughs> I'm a horrible astrologist, okay. But anyway, what I was going to say, you have the moon in, and uh, Pluto, which is retrograde. Sorry, I don't have a little symbol thing. They're in your 10th house. So you might actually start to feel kind of like more emotional in, or you're getting more emotional fulfillment kind of in your job. Also, this is somehow connected to your career. So some of you guys might actually be kind of like something about oh, this is what it is. Wow. In your career, you might actually, because the moon is subconscious stuff and Pluto is retrograde and Pluto is all about your transformation. So you might actually start to like have some emotions come up in your work environment. And it could be connected to something from your childhood. And you might start to see that you have a similar dynamic that's set up from your childhood like vibrationally you've been pulled into a similar kind of dynamic from the which you know the one that you were raised so there could be some emotions coming up around that as far as either emotional blockages but it might actually transform into kind of like getting through that blockage will allow you to open up to deeper emotions and also some of you guys more intuitive abilities like you might actually start to feel more intuitive or more emotional in some way shape or form when it comes to your career it doesn't have to be negative i just feel as though the pluto retrograde might bring some interesting shifts when it comes to your career and maybe seeing certain things about why you're drawn to the particular career that you're in or what you want to move into there's a lot of awakenings and realizations that are happening there now quickly in your 11th house dude jupiter and saturn are both going to be there and you have the maiden of wands so there could be something here about you oh, actually i feel like that's you um there could be certain things that you might start taking action on saturn and jupiter you might start to feel as though it could be connected somehow to friends. This is your wish and dream fulfillment. And it's all about kind of your social networking. It's your social environment and connections. So there, there could be something new that you're taking action on. Maybe a new hobby or a passion or a sport. And it could be somehow kind of like putting you in connection with other people. I feel as though Saturn though, it's going to be a lot of work dedication, but with Jupiter also in there, I feel as though there will be a reward. Jupiter will be going into retrograde towards the end of the month. And that's a whole other story. I would highly recommend, like I always tell you guys, check out Christopher Renstrom on Instagram. He has a lot of amazing information about the retrogrades, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it there, Aries. I'm going to dive into the extended. We will do clarifiers on all the cards. So if you guys want to join me over there, of course, feel free. Go down below, click on the Vimeo link, and I'll see you over there. But Aries, if this is where we leave things, I'm sending you guys so much love. Wishing you all the very best, and I'll see you in your next reading. Take care.